I think we got a few more if that's okay with you. <laughs> Did y'all have a good time tonight? It all ends here. I'm just kidding. We're just gonna get serious for a moment. Um, I talk about it every night. Uh, I talk about a, a multitude of stuff every night. Tonight I'm gonna focus on this one because we're, I think we're limited on time. Um, yeah, I wish. Uh, I lost my mom on New Year's Eve of 2019. Uh, my mom was my best friend. Uh, I talked to her at least once a day, sometimes two or three times a day. Um, every good quality I have came from her. Every bad quality I have came from her as well. <laughs> but tonight we're gonna focus on the good stuff. My mom was loud, very loud, obnoxious loud. Kind of loud to get you kicked off airplanes these days. <laughs> she was a Karen before they even had a fucking word for it. I loved her. Uh, she was outspoken. She taught me to be outspoken. She taught me to stand tall in my convictions and never back down to anyone, uh, especially if I thought I was right. Yeah. My mother taught me to have confidence. My mother taught me the value of language. She taught me the value of words. Um, almost to a, a fault. My mother taught me how to hurt people with words. It was like she knew what Twitter was. In 1987, she just... So there's this thing coming. I need you to learn how to be quick and witty and direct and cut in 140 characters or less. Why, Mom? Trust me. It's coming. She was smart. Uh, she was independent. Fiercely, fiercely independent. My mother worked two jobs my entire life to make sure that me and my brother didn't want for anything. Um, every good thing that people say about me came directly from her. Um, I miss her every day. My mother also had the same disease that I have. My mom was an addict. Um, I am a drug addict. I am an alcoholic. Um, I've been in recovery for nine years now. But my mom wasn't lucky. My mom wasn't that lucky. But I, I, I always have to tell the story and I have to, to, to preface it with my mom wasn't always an addict. My mom knew better. Um, my mom was the youngest of six children. She watched every one of her older siblings die before they were 45 years old of substance abuse related deaths. She knew better. She knew it was in her blood. She knew that she couldn't do it. She taught us early on. We called it the family problem. It was her side of the family. My dad's side of the family was redneck. But her side was redneck er. <laughs> they went exceptionally hard. My mom knew she couldn't do that shit. My mom never drank. My mom never did drugs. My mom never did any of that stuff until the last three years of her life. Um, my mom had a couple botched back surgeries. Um, and she was in an immense amount of pain all the time. And she just started fading into the shell of the woman that raised me. And it was hard to watch. But then one day she went to the doctor and they gave her these little pills, these oxycontins. And they were fucking magical at first. They brought her back. Like she was like just vibrant for months. She was just wide open. She was the same person that raised me. She was this like superhero again. She wasn't hurting anymore. She wasn't in pain. She was, she was, she was that light every time you walk into a room. But then we started realizing very quickly uh, that my mother had a problem once the dementia kicked in. When my mom started getting the early onset dementia. She started forgetting who she had to hide the abuse from, who she had to hide the using from. That She was going to multiple doctors, getting multiple prescriptions, hiding them around the house, using them far after she was supposed to be using. And only after she started forgetting who she had to hide it from was when we started seeing it. The people that loved her, she started forgetting who we were. We started seeing it. It became very, very clear that these drugs had their teeth in her and they were not gonna let go of her. And uh, very quickly, she, she, she declined and I had to watch her fade away slowly. And that's the hard, I've done a lot of hard shit in my life, but the hardest thing I've ever do is watching an absolute fucking force of nature be reduced to a shell 
of the person she was. That was so fucking hard for me. So when she died, I wasn't sad. I wasn't angry. I wasn't lonely. I was, I was fucking happy. Cause she wasn't hurting anymore. She wasn't struggling anymore. Then the guilt kicks in. The guilt kicks in as a son. You, you're supposed to be sad when your mom dies. And I thought for sure the day that her funeral happened, I thought that I'd feel something. I'd feel that, that sadness. But we watched her get lowered in the ground. I didn't feel sadness. I didn't feel lonely or anger. I felt happy again. It was joy. Because for three straight days, me and my friends and my family, we gathered and we, and we told stories about who she used to be. The firecracker that she used to be. The sadness didn't come until much later, almost six months later. Uh, my birthday is when the sadness came. The birthday was, it was the, it was the first holiday that I associated with my mom. Is my birthday. Uh, every single year on my birthday, my mom would call at the exact minute I was born. 7.34 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> you could set your fucking watch to it. I didn't care where I was in the world. It wasn't 7.33. It wasn't 7.35. It was 7.34 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And every single year, I'd pick up that phone, and every single year, it was the same shit. She would just say, hey. And I said, hey, mama. And she said, I just want to call and remind you that at this exact moment, 30-some-odd years ago, you ruined me and your father's life. <laughs> and she tried her best to say it with a straight face and it hurt me. <laughs> but after about like 10 seconds, you could hear it through the phone. You could hear it bubble up from her stomach. And you could hear it bubble up. And it would come out in the corners of her mouth. It was just her laugh. I still fucking hear it. It's my favorite noise I've ever heard in my entire existence. I still fucking hear it clear as day. When she's belly laughing, there was nothing better than a true, true laughter coming out of that woman. And she would just start laughing. And it, I looked forward to it. It was, a, it was a stupid fucking joke. And usually when your parents tell the same joke for 30 some odd years, it gets old. <laughs> this joke never got old. This joke, I looked forward to this joke every year. And so in, in May of 2020, when my birthday rolled around, the day went by, the day crept by, and then it, then it hit me. I looked at my clock and it was 734, 735, 736, 737. She was gone, she wasn't calling. It was real. It fucking crushed me, absolutely crushed me. God bless my dad, he called me two hours later. <laughs> Motherfucker let me swim in it for two hours. <laughs> and he called me up at like 7.30. I'm at 9.30. He's like, hey. And I'm like, hey, daddy. He's like, uh, I know this is you and your mama's thing, but uh, there's a game on. <laughs> and that's when I realized that motherfucker has no idea what time I was born. <laughs> and me and my brother have sworn a blood oath to never tell him. <laughs> so every year it's like a fucked up game of Redneck Price is Right. He's trying his best to guess. This year it was 5.30. I was like, oh! So close. You didn't go over. But. And, and he's struggling with it because it's been three years now that he's guessed. And, and he's like, I know it was after dinner. I know it was before I went to bed. And I was like, well, he got a, another shot next year. Stick around for the exciting conclusion of my dad finally realizes when I was fucking born. But I look forward to it now. It's, it's a different kind of laughter because we're just making fun of him. Uh, but I watched my dad go through that same kind of loss uh, on his anniversary. My dad's one of them big corn fed, redneck dudes who doesn't like to talk about his emotions, doesn't like to show emotions. He likes to be this strong, masculine rock so that the rest of his family, especially his sissy son, can write in his journal and feel feelings. <laughs> But I had to watch him deal with that, that loss the day his anniversary rolled around, the day that he woke up for the first time in 43 years and looked over to his left and the love of his life was not looking back at it. 
I was there. I went home. I spent the night. I slept on the couch. And he woke up, and the next morning, he's, I've never seen that look on my dad's face before. He was broken. He was feeling something. For the first time in my entire life, my dad was not a superhero. My dad was a human being. I don't know if you've ever had to deal with your parents like that, but he just came over on the couch and said, hey, my dad's so much bigger than I am. He just came over to me, sat down and sat there and I held him. And he's crying. Never seen my dad cry before. I'm just sitting there holding this giant rock of a human being. That's hard. So I wrote a song for me and him, and I put it out. I want to put it out. I, I quickly realized it wasn't me and him anymore. This is for a lot of people. This is for anybody that's lost somebody. This is for anybody that's struggling with that grief. So if you've lost anybody, if you've lived enough life to have lost somebody, whether it be a parent, or a spouse, or a sibling, or God forbid, a kid, this is for you. And uh, if you haven't lived enough life yet to lose somebody of that magnitude, this song's going to be waiting for you when you do. This is a song called The First Year. It's finally here that time of year when your favorite the flowers start to bloom. And the showers of April cascade into the sun we call June. Yesterday was my birthday, the first one since you've been gone. All my friends say it gets easier, all my friends have been known to be wrong. Cause you left in such a hurry, had so much left to say. Yeah, I was just passing by, but I'd stop and say hi, and I miss you. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, the two of you said I do, July 4th, 76. And it was all sunshine and rainbows. Till you threw a couple babies in the mix A shining example Of what love could truly be But like a castle made of sand I watched that mountain of a man Fall apart when they laid to rest his queen she left in such a hurry. I had so much left to say. Yeah, I'm just passing by, but I'd stop and say hi, and I miss you. Happy Independence Day. Last New Year's Eve was like no other New Year before. And you never think you'll get that call till that call comes a knocking at your door. Cause you left in such a hurry. I had so much left to say Yeah, I'm just passing by But I'd stop and say hi And I miss you Happy New Year